Amen. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in his holy mountain, beautiful in ele elevation, the, jo the joy of the whole earth. And Mount Zion on the side of the north, yes. the city of the great king. Amen. God is in her palaces. He is known in her refuge. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come out another Sunday morning yes. to give you all the praises and glory to your name. Father, we thank you for what you have done for us this past week yes, Lord. and what you want to do for us the coming up week. Yes, Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless those that are listening in, yes. those that are hearing your prayers. Bless those that have lost love in this world. Give them the peace and comfort that they will need.
Sunday school starts at 9.30. Church worship experience starts at 10.30. Follow the letter. Follow the uh, directives. And I declare that if we do it, build it one brick at a time, the house will be filled again. Hallelujah. And the second one is for those who may not be members and may not uh, have had a relationship with Mount Calvary in the past, but you've joined it with us time after time. You've been our covenant partners for these last 17, 18 months. You might not have gotten a letter as a member, but you're still part of the body of Christ. And so if you do want to come to be our guest on next Sunday, we ask a couple of things from you. Um, we're not asking that you show any vaccination cards. We're going to walk by faith and not by sight on that issue. But what we want you to do is make sure you wear your face mask, okay? Number two, we have hand sanitizers here at the church. And number three, we're going to have a temperature check. And the reason we're doing that is for the safety of all of God's people. Yes. Okay? So if you're not a member or a covenant partner and you say, well, I've been watching this ministry for 18 months. I want to go be a part of, of the first Restoration Sunday. Please follow those three directives. Your face mask, hand sanitizer, and we will do a temperature check when you get here at Mount Calvary. And we're going to praise the Lord together. I'm so excited. Uh, but yes, I, I really believe that we're going to overcome this if we keep our prayers up, keep blessing one another, keep blessing the Lord, that the Lord will see us through. Now I'm going to give it over to Brother Thomas, and he's going to give kind of directives on the choir, and then we're going to move forward with the worship experience. May God continue to bless you, and may heaven smile on you is our prayer. Brother Thomas. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. To God be the glory for all that he's done and is going to do, and he's doing. And so, um, as far as the choir is concerned, all choir members, if you feel like that you would like to sing or feel comfortable, or comfortable, and if you do not feel comfortable, that's understandable. But if you do, I want you to start calling in. Uh, call the church from 9 until, or 9.30 until 1.00 o'clock Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of next week and put your name on the list if you want to sing. And we'll also want to have a rehearsal uh, the 31st, which is next Saturday, uh, on the 31st at 10 a.m. And we're going to follow protocol. We're going to be uh, socially distant, six feet apart. But I need to know who is wanting or willing to sing and so that we can get a count and uh, know how we're going to arrange you. So uh, this is going to be, this is very important because we do, uh, first of all, we want to follow protocol. We want to follow the safety uh, protocols that uh, has been given to us by uh, our state, our governor, and by our pastor and the uh, officers at Mount Kevin Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you in advance. Uh, I love you, you and you. God bless and keep you as my prayer. Yes, sir. At this time, our scripture lesson will be coming from Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. And I am reading. Come to me, all you who labor, who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it's from Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 28 through 30. God's reading, reading God's word for the people of God. That's the reading. Now we will have a selection by the music ministry, and the next person yes. who will hear will be none other than Pastor Luther Aaron Jr. Thank you. 
We got to hold on to God's and change your aim. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Make me feel all right this morning to know that. Yeah. That when everything else has passed us by, and everything else has failed us, that's one thing that will never fail. And that's the love of God for you and I. That's right. To all of our members, uh, to all of our covenant partners, and to our worship leader, Reverend Brenda Roar, to Brother Thomas and Brother Isaiah, uh, to the gentlemen that run the cameras, Brother Patrick Turner, Brother Michael Cochran, and to all of you, the officers and members and friends of Mount Calvary, to all of you, my father's children, I want to say grace and peace unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you know that it is good to be here this Sunday morning? Yes, sir. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, sir. You see, last night on Saturday night, when we laid down, we had no guarantees that we would rise this morning. Come on, Pastor. So we are not holding back and giving God what He deserves, and that's giving Him praise, honor, and the glory. How many of you love? How many of you love the Lord like I do? Yes, sir. See, I don't mind lifting my hands in the sanctuary Amen. and tell God, thank you, thank you for your glory, thank, thank you for your glory. spirit yes, sir. that lives inside of us. Thank you for my family, God. Thank, thank you, Lord. For my church family, thank you for keeping us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yes, Lord. I realize that trouble come, but trouble don't last always. Yes, I don't know about you, Reverend, but the Bible teaches me that weeping endures for a night. Yes, sir. But when I wake up, joy comes in the morning yes, light. Yes, it does. And so thank you that I am reminded all I gotta do, all we have to do is hold on to God's and change it. I want to say thank you for praying for my wife and I. We're just getting back from our little sabbatical, our vacation, and it was a glorious time just to take a rest. You know, all of us need a rest every night, now and then, even for ministry. Yes, sir. Just enjoy your family and your friends, and then when you come back, you kind of fired up to do what God has called us to do. Amen. So we want to thank you for praying with us and praying for us. We thank uh, Reverend uh, Hall, Richie Hall, and all of Mount Calvary yes. for your support on last week and keeping the fire going yes. while the pastor was away. Yes. And I pray that God continue to bless you, uh, Reverend Hall, and all of you that participated, you can face it, and all of you, Amen. that God will continue to hold you and keep you in his loving care. Yes. Reverend Hall preached, I mean, excuse me, read this morning from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 11. And it's not our intent to keep you long this morning. We just wanted to give you what God has given me. And I pray that someone is blessed by this wonderful and awesome word that she read from Matthew, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. And that's one verse I want to pull up uh, that she read. And that's verse number 29 of chapter 11. And from the New International Version, it reads, uh, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Yes, sir. And I want to talk to you this morning, and certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit, from this thought, learning how to rest in Jesus. Yes. Come on, Learning how to rest in Jesus. Make it plain. Throughout the experiences of our lives, we need meaningful and gratifying relationships that enable us to release our innermost desires. That's why having an interpersonal relationship with trustworthy people is important because in those people we can find a moment of release to share with others what we are going through. Yes, sir. Every now and then we need to find those relationships where we can share with others what we are experiencing. Uh -huh. There's some, some times in our lives that we go through things and we internalize them. And the more you internalize things, the more bitter some of us become. So we have to discover every now and then that in life we have to 
find those interpersonal relationships so we can have that season of release. Yes, sir. Where we can share with someone our good days and our bad days. We can share with someone about our hurts and our feelings. We can share with people about our brokenness, our dreams, and our accomplishments. That's why it's important to create or discover interpersonal relationships. My dear brothers and sisters, interpersonal relationships exist between any two or more persons who interact and fulfill one or more physical or emotional needs. And according to a 2010 article in Time magazine, challenges in life may feel less daunting to people with close interpersonal relationships. In other words, the magazine notes that close emotional connections and relationships may provide a sense of safety and security that reduces stress and promotes good health. For example, strong interpersonal relationship exists between people who feel many of each other's emotional and physical needs. For an example, my brothers and sisters, a mother may have strong interpersonal relationships with her children because she provides for her children. She provides safety, shelter, food, love, and acceptance. So a mother and a father, as their children are growing up, they create those interpersonal relationships on our jobs, in our churches, in our communities, there are some folk that just got the talent and personality enough to create interpersonal relationships. Yeah. However, from a spiritual perspective, this definition is applicable to us that are resting in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. For dear brothers and sisters, resting in Jesus enables us to have an interpersonal relationship. Listen closely. When we rest in the Lord, we have that relationship, we have that closeness with Jesus as a Savior. Number one, when you have an interpersonal relationship with the Lord, we know that the Lord is our Savior. Yeah. That meant Jesus died and was resurrected, and upon the confession of our faith, He saves us. Yeah. When Jesus saves us, that simply means we are born again. When we are born, that means we have been accepted by God as his adopted child. And when we are accepted by God as his adopted child, we have an interpersonal relationship with the Lord. And when we have an interpersonal relationship with the Lord, not only do we call the Lord our Savior, but we call Jesus our friend. Can I get a witness? A friend that we can take all of our burdens to, and a friend that we can leave our burdens with the Lord. We used to sing a song a long time ago. I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. And I found this to be true in our text and in our world today, brothers and sisters. Because before we look at what it means to rest in Jesus, we first must take inventory of what happened prior in the text as Jesus began inviting people to come to him. There was something that happened. And as Jesus is in the text, Jesus is teaching and spreading the good news of the kingdom of God. Yet unfortunately, many did not get what he was saying. That's right. And it amazes me, dear brothers and sisters, to see people who should have recognized the revelation of God taking place in their midst, but yet they failed they fail, fail to understand that Jesus was the revelation of God to save people from their sin. Yes, His corporate invitation was misunderstood. When Jesus said, come to me, it was misunderstood by many that should have gotten it. Right. Listen, John the Baptist should have gotten it. John the Baptist knew his unworthiness when Jesus came to be baptized. John the Baptist, uh, he heard when that voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son. Yeah. Yet the Bible teaches us 
that when John was in a dungeon, when he was in that wet, cold jail cell, he was not sure if Jesus was the Messiah. So he sent out his disciples to ask Jesus a question. Are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? So John should have known, but he had a problem about understanding who Jesus was. So the question is, who gets it? If John the Baptist did not get it, if the wise leaders and scholars of Israel did not get it, if the people of Jesus' day did not get it, well, the question I'm going to ask you before I take my seat, according to the text, who gets it if it's hidden from the wise and the learned? Well, according to Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, and that B clause, and verse 27, Jesus says, this is who gets it. He says, little children. Little children, in essence, means the ones who get what God is trying to say in the revelation of today is the ones who are unpretentious. Uh -huh. Little children, those who are not hypocrites, those who don't pretend to be one thing on Sunday and something totally different on Monday. Jesus says, little children who make no claims or anything because they believe all they have belongs to the Lord. But are ready to receive the kingdom message with joy. Jesus says, listen, those who went to school didn't get it. Those who got their degrees didn't get it. But the ones who really received the message from heaven were the unpretentious people, the little children. All right. Many of us today have not gotten it. And because of that reason, some are still burning down with heavy loads. That our folk, Brother Thomas, as much as we've preached, brothers and sisters, as much as we've talked from this pulpit, as many songs as we sung and evangelism that we try to do, yet there's still folk that are still carrying around their heavy load. That's right. It doesn't matter, dear brothers and sisters that's watching me and listening to me, it doesn't matter how long you've been in church, it doesn't matter how much you've come to Sunday school. It doesn't matter how many revival meetings you've been to, people are still carrying their heavy load. Yes, sir. People are still being challenged and they're still struggling with personal life issues. That's right. They're struggling in their communities, they're struggling on their jobs, they're struggling in their church family, they're struggling in their personal families, they're still carrying that heavy load. Listen, life issues. They're burning down with life issues. Somebody's looking at me today and watching me today and said, what are the life issues? Well, they're burning down with weariness. Number one, with weariness. Toiling all of these years. People are toiling and they're going through all of these life experiences and never can figure out why they're here. They can never figure out what their purpose in life is. They're just living, spinning wheels. Weariness, they're carrying around burdens of weariness. Well, Number two, there's some folk I've met that carry around burdens of yokes of pride and arrogance. Uh -huh. Trying to get a big status in the community. They want greatness in their community. They, they love promoting their secular education and their degrees, but that's a yoke of pride and arrogance because when it really comes down to it, people that are hurting They're still burning down with bad relationships. They just won't let it go. Uh -huh. And it happened years ago, and you're still carrying on your shoulders, in your mind, and in your heart today. They're burning down with their heavy loads. Yeah. There's still people that are burning down with unproductive lives and never producing fruits of righteousness. There's some people that are so lazy. They're so, they got callous hearts and hearts and hearts, and they're carrying around that burden of sin and shame, headache and pain. They're still carrying around the heavy load. Why? Because you have not listened to what the Lord has to say. Yeah. But the scripture teaches us this morning that there is a way you and I can overcome these things, and that's by listening 
and listening to the voice and listening to the invitation by the Lord. And in order to hear what God has to say to us this morning, and in order to get rid of that heavy load of weariness and stronghold, we must open our Bible, we must be living in prayer to see what God has to say. Because I'm tired of carrying around this heavy load. Yes, yes, Somebody's tired of being your back about broke because you're still carrying loads that Jesus said you ain't got to carry no more. That's right. So Jesus now turns his attention from a corporate invitation to individuals that will listen to him. It is no longer the national announcement to Israel by the kingdom, but a personal invitation to find the rest of salvation. So Jesus says there in verse number 28 of chapter 11 of Matthew, listen to what the Lord says this morning. Jesus says in the scriptures, come to me. Not to your family, not to your friends, and I'm not saying they don't love you, and I'm not saying they don't pray for you, I'm not even saying they don't care about you, but there's going to come a period in time in life where we have to understand that they can only do so much for us. Yeah. They cannot lift their heavy burden like the Lord. So Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Is anybody weary and burdened this morning? But Jesus said, you come to me, I will give you rest. Right. Not to escape from work or other demands of life. That's not what work means. We got to work in order to make a living. That's not what he's saying. Jesus did not escape that. He did not escape the toils and the pains of life. Jesus did not escape, escape that. He did not escape the conflicts that makes life hard. Jesus was talked about. Jesus was ridiculed. Yes, Jesus was interrogated. Can I get a witness? He's not talking about that. He says, I will give you rest. And what that rest he's talking about is an intermission from labor. An intermission from labor that refreshes us and helps us overcome our fears and anxiety. And every now and then, God will give us rest. Rest from crying. He gives us rest from brokenness. It's an intermission from labor. He gives us rest. And when God gives us rest, he can give us things that people cannot. He can give us love. When we begin to rest in the Lord, he replaces it with love. He replaces the burdens of whatever you're going through. God replaces it in this intermission from labor. He replaces it with love. And not only with love, but God can heal us. Yeah. God can remove those burdens. And God knows we need a rest from COVID-19. A lot of us that are talking to you, to you, a lot of us that are listening to me, we know we can raise our hands and say, you know, Pastor, we need rest from COVID-19. Yeah. Every time I turn on the radio, or every time I listen to the news, or every time I go onto my computer, or even listen to a church service, I hear about COVID-19 and its devastation that is leaving across the world. And God knows, I hear the Lord say, but if you come to me, I will give you rest. That means he'll give you an admission from the labor, but God, only God can heal it. Yes, yes. He says there in verse number 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He says, for I am gentle. That's what we learn. He said, learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart. And listen, and you will find rest for your soul. That's right. He says, take my yoke. What is a yoke? You know, Israel, they were agriculture people. Israel were farmers. And so they understood what a yoke was. A yoke was a wooden bar that attached two oxen to work efficiently and effectively out in the fields. Mm -hmm. But yoke in the Old Testament, it meant a slavery, divine judgment that only God could break. Yeah. In the New Testament, Jesus says that Jesus turns the whole thing around. Jesus puts a positive spin to take up his yoke. And when you take up the yoke of the Lord, it's not burdensome. Jesus' yoke it doesn't weigh you down. Mm. Jesus' yoke does not tie us to human ideas or religion or how to escape from stuff. Mm. In other words, Jesus says, let us yoke together. Jesus says, let you and I come together. Yeah. Confess your sins. Believe in the Lord Jesus, and Jesus says, let us come together. He says, but my yoke is easy, yeah. and 
said, Jesus says, come and let's have an interpersonal relationship. And Jesus says, when you come to me and when you confess me as your Savior, when you announce me as your friend, he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, you will learn from me. Yes. And what do we learn from the Lord, brothers and sisters, as I quickly try to let you go this morning? We learn from him. He says, learn from me. Yeah. He says, as I work the will of my Father. And what is the will of God for Jesus? As he says, learn from me. He says, you will learn, number one, how to treat people right. It doesn't matter what people say about you. Listen, it doesn't matter what people try to do to you. You got to learn like Jesus did. You got to learn to love him anyway. Yes, sir. Jesus says, you got to learn from me. And when I begin to look at my Bible and begin to look at the works and the words of Christ, you got to learn how to talk to people. Yes, so you can't just talk to people any kind of, not nowadays, you got to watch out how you talk to folks. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That they That's right. You got to learn from Jesus how to talk to people. Can I get a witness? Yeah, you on. can't talk down to people because you have a little bit more education than somebody. You can't just talk down to people because you've been in church all your life and they're just coming in. You just can't talk to folk any kind of way. That's Jesus right. said you got to learn from me. That's right. We got to learn how to encourage people. That's right, sir. Jesus encouraged folk. He tells the woman, go and sin no more. He tells the man, take up your, your mat, take up your bed and walk. We got to learn how to encourage people. That's what I learned from the Lord. That's what we learned from the Lord is how to encourage folk that are going through. Come on, Pastor. Listen. What did we learn from Jesus? He said, learn from me. You got to learn how to be honest with people. Quit telling lies. Quit telling untruth. Quit telling falsehood. To try to make people feel good. You know what? In order to move forward, we got to learn from Jesus. And the thing I learned from Jesus is be honest with people and tell people what's going on. Can I get a witness? Yep. Listen, one of the things that we cannot sugarcoat in this religion is that a soul that sinned shall die. You got to tell the truth. And then lastly, you got to invite people to come to God. Listen, it's not only the life that we live, you got to open your mouth and you got to confess what the Lord has done for you and you got to invite people to come to God. Uh -huh. Then you understand, we learn from Jesus that he's gentle and he's humble. And he says, you will find rest. How many you raise your hand in your home and say, you know what, Pastor, I need rest for my soul. Uh -huh. I need that blessed tranquility for my soul. I need peace with God that leads to eternal salvation. Yes, yes. Last but not least, he says, once you find that I have rest for your soul, he says here in verse 30, the last verse, he says, for my yoke, number one, is easy. Mm -hmm. It's not like the oxen in the field where it's heavy and burdensome. He says, my yoke is easy. But then number two, he says, and my burden is light. He says, in other words, Jesus says to us this morning, he says, once I place my yoke on your shoulders, you will discover that my burden is light. For Jesus to place his yoke on us, in order for the Lord to bless us, we must remove self-pity and replace it with a yoke of divine purpose. Yes. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop carrying that burden on your shoulder and look at me and woes me and, and this and that and that and this. You gotta remove the self-pity and replace it with a yoke that God has called you to divine purpose. And once you understand what that purpose is, you don't have time to have a pity party. You gotta move forward into what God is trying to do for us. For Jesus to place his yoke upon us, not only do we have to remove self pity, we got to remove doubt and replace it with a yoke of blessed assurance. Listen, when God says it, I am blessed assured that it's going to happen. Yeah. Listen, I don't have to have a doubt about it. I don't have to uh, figure it out. I know that when the Lord blesses us, he's going to bless us real good. That's right. we got to remove toil and replace it with the yoke of productivity. Got tired of my life spinning wheels. No spinning wheels, just spinning wheels, always moving, but going nowhere. God wants us to be productive in our ministry. Thomas, he wants us to be productive in the things that we say, productive in the people that we talk to, productive in our ministry, not just spinning wheels. And when we come back to church, God don't want us just to do the same thing, spinning wheels, expecting a different result. God wants us to move forward yes, sir. to produce fruits of righteousness. 
last but not least, and I want to bid you good morning. God says we got to remove the fig tree mentality and replace it with the grapevine. And y'all, y'all country people out there, you know what I'm talking about. God says you got to, in order, in order to understand about the rest of Jesus in our lives and removing that burdensome yoke and replacing it with the yoke of Christ, you got to get rid of that fig tree mentality. What is the fig tree? Well, the fig tree is hypocritical. The fig tree, in other words, when Jesus saw it, it produced leaves. And when a fig tree produced leaves, it was signal that it had figs on the tree. And so when Jesus saw the leaves, Jesus said, surely the fig tree must have fruit on it. But when Jesus went to partake thereof, he found out that the fig tree wasn't telling the truth because the leaves said it was figs, but when Jesus went to get the fig, there was no fig. So what did he do? He cursed the fig tree. And when they came back, they found out the fig tree had died. So we don't want a fig tree mentality, brothers and sisters. We don't want that mentality, can I get a witness? Well, we say we want thing, or we show that we're the one thing, but in our heart, we don't have an interpersonal relationship with God. That's right. But God wants us to have a grapevine mentality. That Jesus says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, together we can produce much fruit. For without me, Jesus said, you can't do nothing. All right. So we want to be the grapevine. And our mom and dad said, I heard it through the grapevine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not the fig tree, but through the grapevine. Right. And when we rest in Jesus, when we begin to rest in the Lord, can I get a witness? Yeah. And when we begin to have that interpersonal relationship with Jesus, yeah. Yeah. we tell the Lord, Lord, throw your arms around me where no evil cannot harm me. We can look to the Lord and say, oh Lord, I'm in your care. Yes. When we have that resting in our interpersonal relationship with the Lord, we can look to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I know I've done so many things in my life that has not been pleasing, but Lord, I want you to keep me in your care. Yes. Because it is Satan's desire to Sip us as sweet, but when the Lord keeps us, He keeps us in His care. That's right. And then we can sing freely and say freely, mm -hmm. What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes, sir. All of our sins Free. and griefs to bear. That's right. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Yeah. As I bid you good day, we can say, I will trust in the Lord yes. until I die. I will stay on the battlefield. Until I die. Resting, learning how to rest in Jesus is creating an interpersonal relationship with the Lord, a bondship of the Lord that no one can ever break. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our hands in prayer. Eternal God, our Father. Father, we thank you for allowing us to have an interpersonal relationship with you where we can rest our souls. Somebody this morning, their soul needs rest, God. They've been toiling for 18 months, 17 months with COVID-19. And somebody's tired, God. They're mentally drained. They're physically exhausted. Somebody's been dealing with the burden of losing their loved ones. Somebody's having difficulties in their families. God, somebody's having difficulties in their church family. God, somebody's having some hard times in their community and in their personal lives. They're carrying these burdens from the past, Father, their brokenness, God, that that life that they lived a long time ago that wasn't pleasing to you, Lord. They're still carrying that on their shoulders and in their soul. But Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray a prayer release that you would release them from that, God. And to help them understand that no longer do they have to carry unnecessary burdens because we can take it to the Lord and leave them there. And God, when we leave them there, we don't have to pick them up no more, but we can say, sure, that we are free. 
because we have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I want you to touch the ones that are unsaved, those ones that still don't believe that to the utmost Jesus can save them. But I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus, those who are listening and watching, that they come to Jesus as they are. Because God can, God will, create within them clean hearts and renew that right spirit within them. I pray for the ones that are unsaved, those who are going through, that they will come through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ before it's too late. God, I pray for them that they will confess Jesus as their personal Savior right now. That they can give it to God and believe in their heart, God, that you did something so incredible by raising Jesus from the dead. So we may all have a right to the tree of life. God, I pray for them right now. I pray that they lift their hands and lift their hearts wherever they may be and give it over to you right now. God, I pray for all the members and covenant partners of Mount County. Those who have chimed in, God, for all of these months, this year and a half, God, seeking a blessing from you. And I pray, God, that the songs that were given, the prayers that were offered, yeah. the sermons that were preached, the lessons that were taught, God, we're encouraging to them, we're inspiring to them. So as we go forth back into our church service officially, the first Sunday in August, where people can know what the Lord has done. For God, you've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So God, I want you to bless us and help us make those right decisions for the safety of all your people. God, thank you for all of the ministers. Thank you for all of the musicians. Thank you for all of the people that love Mount Calvary. God, I pray for our president. I pray for our government. I pray for our governor. I pray for all of our leaders in the political realm, God, that's trying to do the right thing. God, bring them the knowledge and the knowledge that they need in order to lead these your people. But bless me who feels the least of, all, least of them all, God, and my family. God, we give it over to you now. Yes, we do. We find rest in you, Jesus. In your precious and awesome and matchless name we pray. Amen. We pray that something was said in this sermon, learning how to rest in Jesus, uh, that will help you uh, carry out through your week. And I would encourage somebody and empower somebody this morning. As you go through your week, do not carry burdens that God has already released you from. Amen. Now may God keep you in this care until we meet again. Amen. Let us look to the Lord to be dismissed. Lord, keep us and guide us. And may your face shine upon us and give us peace. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Now rest, rule, and abide with us until we see each other again. In Jesus' name, we offer this your servant's prayer. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Go in peace. And we look forward to seeing you next Sunday in our celebrative service as we officially come back. Until then, God bless you.